Genuine Progress August 21st, 1979 Without Dhamma, there can be no genuine progress in the world or in Buddhism. When there is Dhamma, there will be peace and happiness because Dhamma is selflessness. With Dhamma, you'll see that all human beings are the same and you'll have loving-kindness, compassion, and unselfish concern for the welfare of others. Without Dhamma, you'll put yourself above others. Although you're bad, you'll be deluded into thinking that you're good. That's why Dhamma is indispensable. When a person, a society, or a country has Dhamma, there will be peace. When there is no Dhamma, there will be strife. When your heart is ruled by the Gilesas, it will be engulfed by fire. The Lord Buddha and all the sages of the present and the past never praised the Gilesas, Tanha and Asava, greed, hatred and delusion, because they agitate and torment the heart. Who can be wiser than a Buddha? All Buddhas propagate the same teaching. They praise the things that are worthy of praise and censure the things that are worthy of censure. They teach you to let go of the things that you should let go of and to develop the things that you should develop for the sake of establishing peace and happiness within your heart and living a peaceful existence. If you can let go of some of these things, you'll be more peaceful and have fewer gilesas. If you can totally let go of everything, you'll be completely free from the gilesas and become a noble and superior being. What can afflict the heart if not the gilesas that have avidda as their root? Any behavior directed by the gilesas can only produce trouble and affliction. The gilesas are troublesome, whilst Thamma is cool, peaceful, and pleasing to the eyes and ears. Thamma is therefore absolutely vital for your well-being. You can always trust Thamma because it's the truth that has existed since time immemorial and can't be wiped out. There are fewer wise people than there are foolish people born into this world. That is why Thamma can only appear once in a long, long time. The appearance of the Thamma, of Buddhism, and of the Lord Buddha are the results that follow the enlightenment of a superhuman being who calls himself Buddha, who through his own efforts and wisdom discovers the Tamma, the basic principles of the cosmos, which he then presents to the world. After his death, his teaching gradually fades away due to the powerful influence of the Gilesas, Tanha, and Asava that encompass the hearts of sentient beings. Eventually, they totally forget the Tamma and let the Gilesas do anything they please to deny them real happiness and only bring them sorrow and pain. Such is the way of the world. Now, let's talk about you. When you're peaceful, calm, and discerning, regardless of where you are, you'll always be cool because you're protected by the Thamma. When you're sidetracked from your meditation practice, like being involved with building a Nukuti, you can become restless and agitated. The Lord Buddha prohibits monks from engaging in any activity that will undermine their meditation practice. For a beginning practitioner who hasn't established any samadhi yet, he should avoid a monastery that is under construction or renovation. Don't be inclined to build this and that. Don't live in a place where people mingle and socialize. You should always seek seclusion and consider your meditation practice as your main undertaking, your lifetime endeavor. You should always practice. This is what the Lord Buddha teaches the monks. For this reason, Many monks during the Lord Buddha's time could realize the Magga, Pala, and Nibbana. After they heard the Lord Buddha's teaching, they seriously believed it, took up the practice, and became enlightened. It is the heart that earnestly believes and practices that becomes happy. It is also the heart that doesn't believe and doesn't practice that becomes miserable. As a practitioner, you should concentrate all your efforts into your meditation practice. You must not be weak or lazy because you're in the battlefield. Who and where are your enemies? They are the kilesas inside your heart. You have to fully develop sati, banya, sadha, and virya to oppose and eliminate them. The Lord Buddha said, Atta hawe jittang zayyo. It's noble to conquer yourself. To conquer yourself, you have to vanquish the kilesas. Where do you achieve victory if not inside your heart? 
This is where your enemies are found. This is where you'll lose or win. But you'll not lose because you'll concentrate all of your efforts into the fight. It doesn't matter if you should die fighting. You'll fight until you win. The place to learn about the cycle of birth, death and rebirth is inside your heart. This is where you'll find out whether your heart will be born again or not. The numbers of births that you've taken up are beyond counting. It is avidda and gamma that cause your jitta to take up birth. You can't choose your birth because it was selected by your gamma that was driven by avidda. Neither can you choose to be happy or sad because they are the consequences of your good and bad gamma. If you can't control your gamma, you can't choose your birth. What is the difference between being imprisoned by the law of gamma and the law of your country? There really is no difference. You have to use this comparison to see the truth of the costs and the benefits of your gamma in order to spur you on to meditate. Birth and death are in your jitta, where you'll have to probe, meditate, and become enlightened. Your jitta is the creator of your ceaseless cycles of birth and death, although you might not know it. But the testimony that attests to this fact is found right in your jitta, which you'll eventually realize through your tamma practice. The more you meditate and probe, the more subtle your jitta will become, and the more you will see clearly the perpetrator of your birth. After the Lord Buddha became enlightened, he was able to see and reveal to others the truth of samsara, the cycles of birth, death, and rebirth that all sentient beings have to go through. For this reason, his Tamma teaching is known as the Svakato Bhagavata Tammo, the well-taught Tamma, because not a single word of his teaching ever deviates from the truth. You're the one who takes up birth, disease, aging, and death. Why don't you know this? Because there are blinding influences within your heart that totally block and obscure this truth. You have to reveal them through your meditation practice. You have to catch the chief culprit in your jitta that leads you to be born and to die again and again. This is Bhaticca Samuppada, or Dependent Origination. Avidya Bhattaya Sankara, Sankara Bhattaya Vinyarnang, etc. Avidya is the principal driving force that propels you to take up birth in the various realms of existence and to experience the fruits of your gamma. The Lord Buddha said that it is the kilesas that drive you to do good and bad gamma. After you have committed these gamma, the fruits of these gamma will then follow you. When I say gilesas, I mean avidda, the master of all the gilesas, who drives all sentient beings to do gamma and to experience the fruits of their gamma by going through the cycles of birth, death, and rebirth called vartachakka. This is similar to an ant that runs around the edge of a basket. It just keeps running round and round, similar to your running round and round the edge of the vartachakka. You'll never know this if you don't practice mental development. Even if you study the entire Dhabhartaka, the Buddhist canon, you'll still be in the dark. The Lord Buddha and his noble disciples became enlightened by practicing mental development, not by studying and memorizing the Buddhist canon. The truth and what you commit to memory are two different worlds. Your memories will always fool you. For instance, if you talk about England, if you have never been there before, you can only imagine what it's like. But after you've been there, your imagination will be replaced by what you actually see. This is what is meant by seeing the truth. When you see the truth, your imagination will disappear because your imagination is fake. What you have studied is also fake. When you come across the truth in your practice, the fake will disappear. This is the way of learning about the jitta. There are no limits to the jitta's involvements. The oceans and rivers have shores and banks, but the jitta is all over the universe in samsara. Therefore, you have to rein in your jitta with sila, samadhi, banya, sadha, and virya in order to see the jitta's true nature. You have to diligently eliminate from your heart all the gilesas, dhanha, and asava that thrust you to be born and die. Then your jitta will be more obvious, the knowingness will be more distinct, and you will clearly see the cause of your wandering around the cycles of birth, death, and rebirth. You will see how much of this cause still remains in your jitta. Though it might not compel you to take up birth in the lower realms of existence, you know you will still have to take up birth. 
You will know this as this cause becomes more subtle and as you advance in your practice. Eventually you will completely eliminate this cause from your citta, which will then be detached from everything, including the five kantas of Ropa, Vedana, Sanya, Sankara and Vinyarna, which the citta has been responsible for. They will no longer affect the citta. The citta will just be the citta. The one who knows will just be the one who knows, and the kandhas will just be the kandhas. The ropa, vedana, sanya, sankara, and vinyarna will just be sammati, or conventional reality. When you've investigated with banya, you'll sever everything from your jitta. You'll cut off ropa, vedana, sanya, sankara, vinyarna, and all physical and mental objects. You'll sever the body, which is merely the element aggregate, a composition of the four elements of earth, water, air, and fire that you see as human, animal, man, and woman, and are totally immersed in this delusion and confusion. A very thin membrane of skin can totally blind and obscure your eyes. Banya must penetrate this skin so that you can see the true nature of the body, that it is particula or filthy, and merely a composition of the four elements. How can you have attachment, affection, and aversion for the elements? When you see this clearly, you'll let go of the body. Concerning Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, and Vinyarna, they are merely conditions that arise out of the jitta, but they are not the jitta. With Banya, you'll be able to restrain them and detach them from your jitta. This is the way to cut off birth and becoming. When you have totally severed the five kanthas and destroyed avidya from your jitta, the cause of birth will be completely eliminated. Your jitta will be like cooked rice that will not grow any more. It's only good for eating. Your jitta will now be only suited for experiencing the bliss of freedom or the vimutti sulka and the state of purity. It's no longer suited for taking up any more birth. You'll know this within your heart. In the Aditta Bariyaya Sutta, or the Fire Discourse, the Anatta Lakkarna Sutta, or the Not Self Discourse, and the Tamma Zakkapavatana Sutta, or the First Discourse, the Lord Buddha proclaims thus From this moment onward, there is no more birth for me, for this is my last birth. He also proclaims in the Not Self Discourse, Vusitang Brahmadzariang, the work of totally eradicating the Gilesas has now come to an end. This is a most noble quest that requires your total effort, your satipanya, and your life. This endeavor has now come to an end. You've now destroyed all of the kilesas. Gatangaraniyang, the task of letting go of all things and the task of mental development have been accomplished. Naparangitadayadi, there is no further work to do. Badanadi, you have now become enlightened. As soon as you've achieved freedom, the realization that you've achieved freedom will also appear simultaneously. This is the bhikkhu's endeavor. This is how the practitioners during the Lord Buddha's time accomplished their task. Their mission was to develop their jitta and investigate the gammatana, starting with the first five parts of the body, geza, loma, nakha, danda, tzo, and then to all the other parts. These are the objects that you'll have to investigate. How do you do it? First, you should develop samadhi or calm with a mantra like buddha or any other object of concentration. Then you should investigate the 32 parts of the body to see their true nature. Are they clean or filthy? You have to keep on probing, especially the skin that wraps around the bones. You can't see the bones. All you can see is the skin which you've been obsessed with and which deludes you. You have to look through this skin to see its content. This is how you should investigate after you've established Kalm of the Mantra, which is like chopping up a piece of meat when you repeat Butto, 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 or Geza, 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 or Naka, 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 or Danda, 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 or Dato, Dato, Dato. This is the way to concentrate the Jitta's strength. When the Jitta is distracted, it has no strength. It's like grass, when tied together in a bunch, is more difficult to break apart. If you want to cut it, you have to chop it several times. On the other hand, you can easily break apart a single blade of grass. It's the same with the jitta. When it is scattered, it doesn't have any strength. It has to be concentrated with a mantra. When the jitta has acquired strength, 
It will be calm and cool and ready for you to investigate with Banya for true knowledge and insight. Starting from Gesa, Loma, Naka, Danda, and Dajo, you'll proceed to the rest of the 32 body parts. You'll go over these parts thoroughly until you see the body's true nature, both of yourself and others. You'll see that they are all the same. This is the bhikkhu's task. This is the way the Lord Buddha taught you to develop Banya. When you investigate Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, and Vinyarna, your Satibanya has to be sharper in order to see their true nature and let go of them. You'll also have to investigate the Gelesas that have gathered inside the Jitta and let go of them. After you've let go of all of them, there will be nothing else to let go because all the Gelesas have been destroyed. There is nothing else for you to do. All the Gelesas will by then have been totally eliminated. First, you have to destroy the Gelesas that cling to the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and body. Then you must destroy the Gelesas that are attached to your body, Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, and Vinyarna. Finally, you'll have to eliminate the Gelesa that is embedded in the Jitta, which is the main culprit. After you've achieved this, then it is Vusidang Brahmadzariang, the end of your endeavor. This is the Bhikkhu's endeavor. Please listen and take it seriously. Don't be sidetracked and led astray to do other tasks, because you won't get rid of the Gelesas that way. The only way to do it is the practice of mental development, the way that I have described to you here. There is no other task that is more noble than the practice of mental development. Though it is the most difficult task, it yields the loftiest benefits. Please set up your determination to concentrate on your investigation. Don't relent wherever you are. As far as staying with your teacher is concerned, this is not certain, because you live in the world of anittang or impermanence. There is no certainty in the world of anittang, because sooner or later there will definitely be separation from one another. What you have learned from your teacher, and deeply embedded in your heart, you must not lose or deviate from. Wherever you go, you must strictly adhere to the Thamma the teaching and the discipline. You have to be earnest and serious, not apathetic and indecisive or lacking in principles. No matter how difficult your task might be, you must shoulder it. You have to muster your faith in the enlightenment of the Lord Buddha and in your ability to become enlightened and free from Dukkha by your diligent effort in order for you to become strong and powerful, persistent and forbearing. Then your samadhi and panya will steadily grow, because they can't be otherwise. Don't ever dismiss from your mind this undertaking if you want to see for yourself the attainment to arahantship, something that you've heard happen to the practitioners during the Lord Buddha's time. No matter how much you might remember these stories, they can't do anything to the Gelesas. The Gelesas are not affected by what you can remember, but they are affected by your practice. For example, the study of Geza, Loma, Naka, Danta, and Dajo that your Upataya, your preceptor, taught you at your ordination is Bariyatti, the theoretical understanding of Tamma obtained through reading, study, and learning only. But they must now be investigated in your practice to have any result. After you've thoroughly investigated them, you'll gain insight into their true nature. This is Bhattiweta, the direct, first-hand realization of the Tamma. It can't be otherwise. Nothing can prevent the jitta that has strictly adhered to the Tamma teaching from realizing Magga, Pala, and Nibbana. The only things that obstruct Magga, Pala, and Nibbana are Dukkha and Samudaya. Neither time nor place can obstruct them. Only the Gelesas, Dukkha, and Samudaya can. For this reason, you have to develop Sati, Banya, Sadha, and Virya to remove the Gelesas that obstruct the path. Then your attainment to Magga, Pala, and Nibbana will not be anywhere else but right within your jitta. It is your jitta that will become enlightened, let go of everything, vanquish the Gilesas, Danha, and Asava, and become supreme, exalted, and transcending the world. All you have to do is accomplish your mission.